Hey everyone, I have a TYT TH UV 8000D dual band FM transceiver here, and I'm going to do a quick review and a quick how to program a repeater into this radio. Um, I'm new to the hobby, uh, I don't have a call sign yet. I'm taking the class right now. Hopefully, in two weeks, I'll have my call sign. Um, but I wanted to pick up a radio ahead of time and I ended up going with this TYT because it is the cheapest radio I can find available in Canada that um, is not a Baofeng. Uh, I don't know much about Baofeng but I've heard bad things with them having spurious emissions and I don't want to be interfering with other people so... I've gone with a brand that is sold on both the major Canadian radio equipment websites and I'm hoping that means it's not going to be causing interference with anybody else. Um, so I got it because it was cheap and I th what I thought would be a, uh, a, a good enough brand name. Um, So what I really like about it, obviously, is first off the price. Uh, I paid $109. It came with two antennas, this whip, and a stubby rubber duck. It comes with a belt clip, a 3600 milliamp hour battery, which I think is the biggest battery you can buy on any handheld dual band radio right now um it comes with a cradle charger it's not a quick charger but it is a cradle charger um, but i ran this radio for uh, about 40 plus hours on receive only on this battery so it, that, that's quite decent um and all the accessories for this radio are also cheap uh, i picked up speaker mic for $22. You can get a 12 volt battery replacer for the car for $18. You can get the programming cable for $11. Um, this will get you on the air. And this actually does have a cross band repeat function as well, if that's something you're interested in. You have to get the Programming cable to unlock it though. There's a menu you need to unlock that you can only do with the programming cable if you're interested in doing that on the D model um, So No digital modes or anything like that but a huge battery and All the accessories are very reasonably priced for a beginner This makes a lot of sense it's something that you still have to program, you still have to uh, play around with a bit to get it working. Uh, but it's not packed with features that you can't understand or have to sift through just to get to do the basic stuff. Um, and it doesn't break the bank. I uh, should also mention that it's a 10 watt radio. It has two power settings, low and high. Low is 5 watts, high is 10 watts. My biggest complaint about the radio would be the manual, I think, being not very thorough and then what information is there, some of it is incorrect, making uh, programming this radio turn into a bit of a guessing game. And that's why I want to do the part of the video where I'm going to show you how to program in a basic repeater because... I think that would scare off new people um, if they can't even figure out how to program the radio. Um, other radios definitely have more intuitive setups. But that being said, this one's not impossible. Um, once, you f once you figure it out, it it's pretty easy to do. Um, that's why I wanted to do this video because I couldn't find anything t telling me how to program the radio. Uh, I ended up getting help off Facebook. Um, but, uh, it took a while. So I'm going to quickly show you how to program a repeater into this radio. 
and hopefully save some other people the guessing game I played to get this to work. So, turn your radio on. Uh, you select your band with the UV key. The arrow shows you which band you're on, the down arrow there we're on the bottom band. You just key in your frequency by typing it in when you're on the band. Uh, next thing you're going to want to set is offset. So the F key is your menu button. It takes you into the menus. Then you can use the up and down arrows or the dial at the top to go through your menus. Or you just key in the number of the menu you want. So you want to offset, then you hit menu to select that one. The arrow goes down to show you selected. You want to offset to 600 kilohertz. You have to push F one more time to set that. Now you're back in the main menu. You want to go down one more menu. This is shift direction. You got to set which direction to offset to on that channel. In this case, it's negative. And the last thing you're gonna to wanna to set is tone. Now this is where I had some trouble because I could find this menu. And if you read the manual, it tells you to push menu and go in here and just use the up and down button to set the tone the access tone and the up and down buttons and the dial don't do anything. You got to use the star button. The star button gets you into this menu. It's like a sub menu, I guess. And then you can choose. So if you keep pushing star, it toggles it between the three choices you can choose between. And then when you're on the one you want, then you use the dial or the arrows to set the tone. So in this case, it's 136.5. You hit F to set that one more time. And that should be it. You hit UV to escape the menu and you have that repeater programmed in. So the last thing you want to do is save that to the memory so you don't have to program that all in again. The TR button down here is the button that switches between VFO mode that we're in right now and memory mode. So to save this to memory you hit menu and the TR button. Now this little number over here is flashing. That number is the number uh, of the slot in the memory where you're going to save this. So you got to know which number you want to save it into. Because if you hit save, you'll overwrite that number if there's something already saved in there. But... Uh, so you turn the dial to your on the number that you want. I'll save this one in number six And you hit menu again And now it's saved so to go to that saved channel then you'd switch yourself To memory mode and there you go channel six is 14694 the repeater that we just programmed in there There's my other channels programmed in there. Here's the weather channel. That's, uh, that's the volume turned all the way up there. So like I said, that speaker's pretty loud. And there you go. Um, everything we just programmed in there, the tone, the offset, Now you can't even change the offset anymore in memory mode, but the offset's saved, the tone is saved. And now the last thing you can do is to uh, put uh, a name for the channel if you want. 
because you can be in frequency mode or name mode when you're in memory mode. Um, so the channel name, menu, what menu 28, channel name, you enter this. Now once you go down here, it starts flashing like that. Then you just turn the dial or use the up down arrows to select between the different characters that are available. And you got numbers and some symbols and you got capital alphabet and then you got a lowercase alphabet. And choose. <laughs> so I just made the mistake I made the first time. So you don't select each letter by pushing the menu key. What you got to do is just move the cursor over one. And now the star and the pound keys are going to be your left and right keys when you're in this menu. So I just hit star and then the cursor moved over one spot. So every time you move it over one spot, you start over again at the beginning of their list. And you just keep doing that until you got the name that you want there. And there's a character that's a blank space. And if you want to go back, you just hit the pound key and then the cursor will start moving to the left. Once you have the name saved that you want to save in there, you just hit menu and that's it. Now hit UV to get out of the menus and there you go. So now you've saved a repeater and named it and saved it to memory in this radio uh i hope that helps some people out and seven three